So it's time to put the finishing touches on. Um, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a simple uh, goal for the spaceship. I'm going to say it's, it rescues satellites. So it's not too thrilling. Maybe you can think of a better plot line in your game. But um, I'll just make an actor here called the satellite. It's not really going to do anything exciting. It just sort of sits in space waiting to be saved by the hero. Um, but um, I'm not going to add any code to satellite. It really is just inanimate. The rest of the magic is going to happen here in the space class where I'm going to end up um, initializing my game. So here's how we do the initializing if you've forgotten a little bit about it. Um, when this world is created, so when space is created, it happens in this constructor. So any initializing should happen here. So I'll give it a, a reasonable name here like enemy. Um, and I'll make a new mothership. And I've been using 0.03. Maybe I'll switch to 0.01 .01 here, make this a little easier. And uh, if I wanted to switch up into a harder level, I could make it spawn faster. Uh, maybe I would make my aliens smarter, like they track me down. Um, since they're a goal mover, it'd be fairly easy to update that. But anyways, in due time, for now, we're just going to uh, put the enemy in the world. And where I'd like to put it is dead center. So if I get the width of the world and divide it by 2, that's the middle of the screen. and I'll get this enemy and I'll ask for its image so I know how big it is and then I'll ask for the height. So half the height will stick it exactly dead center at the top of my screen. So I'll leave a note here so that I know what I was doing when I coded it. Um, top of screen, maybe I'll put middle in there too. The other thing I've been adding is the hero. So let's call them the player. I'll add the hero to the world. Oops, player. And the player, I'll just put it right in the middle of the screen. So width divided by 2, and get height divided by 2. So you notice that I haven't been coding in. Um, I could. I know it's 800 and 600, but I haven't been coding it in on purpose because I this way, if I change this code to be 1,000, I don't have to go and update my code anywhere else. So it's always best to avoid that. It's a great habit. The earlier you get the, ha the uh, hang of it, the better off you'll be further on, but uh, always good to use the methods and variables instead. Now, there's no act method here, but we can add one, and it works just the same way it does on actors. So every time act is called, it'll ask the world, hey world, what happens to you now? And I'm going to create a method called add satellites. That's all the world's really going to do for me, is uh, initialize what um, and then add satellites for the hero to save, I suppose. Um, so it's possible that I keep track of how many satellites that the uh, they've collected and score them or stop the game after you've done 10 or, or whatever you feel like doing for your imagination here. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm only going to put one satellite at a time. And if I'm going to keep track of how many satellites I've got, that means I'm going to use a class here, which we won't really use a lot at the beginning, um, but we will start using it a bit more later on. And it lives in the utilities package, and it's called the list class. And list is a container, and containers can hold any kind of type that you have in Java. And the type that I'm going to ask it about is uh, the satellites. So my list is going to hold satellites, and that's what the angle brackets mean there. Anytime you have a container, and no matter how far along you go in Java, there's all kinds of different container classes. Uh, lists, queues, hash maps, stacks. Um, anyway, it goes on to a tremendous amount of uh, containers. And they all would say what their type is by using the angle brackets. And what I'm going to do is ask the world to get all of the objects from the satellite class. So potentially there could be more than one here, and it will. that's why I'm asking for a container, a list. It'll pull all of them out of the screen and return them. So maybe you want to create a weapon that destroys all the aliens on the screen right now, like a super bomb. What you'd have to do is get a list of all the aliens, and in here you would call this all the aliens and the alien class. And then you could write the code that would take every one of those aliens out of the world. So generally if you're getting more than one thing from Greenfoot, you're going to ask for it as a list. Let's get back to the original idea here, which was to say we just want one at a time. 
So I'm going to ask if the size is zero. And for now, that's all we're really going to use the list class for, is just to check how many are there. Um, you're free to ask me about it or look up the documentation, but there's all kinds of useful ways to use a list. Um, the next step that we would look at in programming would be a list iterator, so we can actually look at each satellite one at a time. But anyways, um, if there are no satellites in the world, I want to add one. So I'm going to have to figure out a little bit about the satellite. So let's go and get its picture so we know how big it is. And my um, satellite image is stored in my images directory. And its name is satellite.png. And to make sure it appears on the screen properly, I have to make a, enough buffer space for half of its width and half of its height. So I'm going to save those values because I am going to use them a fair amount here. And basically, as I did when I added the uh, next goal so that I know where the, the uh, mothership is going to move left and right, I'm going to do the same thing here with the X max. It's going to be the width of the world, take away the buffer. And the X min is very similar, except it starts at zero, so I just need to make sure that I, I give myself some buffer room. So I'll quickly show you again what I'm doing here. Um, if this is the screen, and a satellite is this big, then basically this is as far as I want it to go. Right down the middle, I don't want you to allow a satellite to be placed right there, or this would happen, and you'd be putting a satellite partially off the screen. So the middle is where I, I don't want it to go any further, and that's the width divided by 2, what I'm calling the buffer space. Same idea down here, the satellite would go like this and be off the screen if I didn't account for that amount of buffer room to keep it from getting right out of the screen. So I'll allow that, but I won't allow it to go underneath. So if I pull up my um, method here, those define the edges, the biggest and the smallest, that will be on the screen so that it's not off the uh, mark. Otherwise, part of the satellite might be hiding. And as we said before, if you don't remember how the math works on the random, uh, the math.random class here, then go check out the uh, mothership class where I do the full explanation. This one I'll assume that uh, you're starting to get the hang of the way that formula is used. Um, and you'll see it again when I do the random y coordinate, but this time it's going to be for the y min. And I need to make sure whoops, that it's uh, the y buffer is used. I can't go below there. And if I have a maximum, it's by taking the height of the world. And I'm going to pull off, make sure you don't go above that buffer. And the random y is going to be um, almost the same pattern here, except I'm going to be using the y min and y max. So maybe I'll see if I can explain a little bit of it as I'm typing. But um, what happens is x, y max minus y min um, plus 1, that's the number of random values that I want. So that'll be 0 to the number. And then I have to move it up by y min to shift it to the uh, range that I'm looking for. And then by using an integer, it chops off all the decimals. So this is the range that I was looking for. This will be values from y min to y max. And sometimes we write that like this. So square brackets meaning inclusive. OK, so now I know where to stick this satellite. And there's not really any code uh, in there other than what it inherited from actor. So I don't have to do anything except add it to the world. And this will stick satellites in random spots. And it'll do it whenever none is present in the world. So I'll compile this code here and just hope there's no compiler errors. Oh, spelled it wrong possibly. Yeah, two T's there. OK. There we go. So let's see what the game looks like now. So when I hit the Compile button, here's the way the world's initialized, because the space constructor is being called right now in Java, which puts it top dead center for this mothership, and the main character is at zero. 
So when I run this now, everything's implemented except you're going to see a satellite appear. No satellites are in the world. And it says, oh, I better put one in. Uh, and I've already lost. <laughs> Here, let me reset it. I'll try my game again. And I better shoot him and go save that satellite there. So um, that's what my game's going to look like. The last piece of information I need to add there is the hero doesn't know that it's supposed to pick up that satellite. So we'll just quickly go in here and we will add that code. So I'll add one more method to these, uh, the way that this ship acts. And this method is going to be called save satellites. I guess just a single satellite, so I might as well call it that. And um, I need to get right down to some free uh, space to put a new code in. So to save a satellite, I have to be touching that satellite. So I'll say if I'm touching somebody in the satellite class, then that's the thing I'm going to rescue. So if you remember, um, if I want to call upon one of those, then I have to cast it so Java knows that it's a satellite. And I'll say which class that I'm interested in here. In this instance, because all I'm going to do is remove it, if I didn't want to do that casting, then this should be OK. Um, or we can even go one more, which is to say I have an actor. So I don't know what kind of actor it is because I haven't told Java by casting it. But if I just call upon one intersecting object, it's going to find the, an actor that's touching it. It's not going to give me anybody specific. So um, that's fine as long as I don't need any of the methods that a satellite has. So in this case, anyways, it's a good habit to get in to, to cast it so that you have all those methods available. As you get more uh, advanced at programming, you'll decide when that's uh, needed and when it's not. But this way, it'll just cause less errors as we're programming as beginners. So all I want to do is remove the object that I touched. Um, this also, by the way, is where I would have to go like score um, plus plus because I just touched the satellite. So that means I'm going to uh, increment one. If you've got more than one um, value, it would be good to say like touch dot get its score or maybe we call it get value. This says the hero score will be incremented by the value of a satellite. So if I have, say, 10 different things that it could um, save and it gets different points for different touching different items, get value would allow me to do that. If you do decide to go along that road, um, there's some other techniques that we'll talk about in our next project, but I'd be happy to share them with you earlier. But um, that way we don't have to check for every different type of thing that it can touch. Um, I'll show you a technique that would allow you to have, you know, satellites, asteroids, um, maybe you're saving, uh, oh geez, I don't know, um, other ships. So whatever it is, um, I can show you how to do that with one decision block um, if you want to ask about it early. Otherwise, it'll be coming to us in another project. So um, that's not implemented in my code anywhere. It would give me an error right now, but that's where you would do your scoring since I know I just saved my satellite. And uh, I'm not going to pretend that my creativity skills are amazing when it comes to making games, but that's where you can come in and do a better job than I have here. So there's my satellite. Uh, I definitely don't want to try and get it while there's all those aliens around, but now I'll see if I can do it there. So one, a new one appears, and just so I don't... Ah, ah. <laughs> anyway, that's the way my game would run. Um, that looks like my finished project, and um, I'll be posting it up with all the code in the videos so you can have a look, be inspired, and make your own uh, better version uh, using some similar scenario in Greenfoot.